Hi there, listener. Now, it's been a little while since we've released anything here at Food to Watch Films by, um, so I thought with it being a run-up to Christmas, it now would be as good a time as any to release our Halloween episode. Now, you might be thinking Halloween was some time ago now, so, um, but, you know, unfortunately, life just got in the way. You have no life. Who said that? You did. Did I? Okay, uh, fair enough. Um, so anyway, um, here it is, uh, our Halloween episode. Uh, it was recorded around Halloween. Like I said, just hadn't got a chance to edit it until now. You're such a liar. Huh? Okay. Um, anyway, uh, so here it is, folks. Um, so sit back, relax, take off your trousers, if you will, and listen to episode 20, Moira Stewart's Caravan of Death and the Anonymous Dinner Guest. And so one night, after he began beating their daughter, she stabbed him several times until he lay dying in a pool of his own blood. Kind of deserved it, but go on. Well, yeah. yeah what uh, dick. And that night, they concealed his body in a place they thought no one would ever find it. A couple of years went by, and just as things were returning to normal, the twisted hand of fate turned once more against them, when following a leak in gas mains, their garden was dug up, and Trevor's rotting corpse was found buried under the patio. Whoa, Fred West style. Yeah, yeah, that's how that went down. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I I mean, I would have to say that storyline, along with Beth, George Ash's lesbian romance were undoubtedly some of the best moments of British TV soap opera in history. Um, well, uh, that was Brookside. Yeah, yeah. Um, did, did you watch did, much Brookside? Or? Well, not really. I mean, I know the finale was all a dream, so therefore everything that, that preceded it yeah. just meant nothing. Well, well, but know, plus, well, we're supposed to be telling ghost stories here. I mean, well, I mean, well, it, it well, was but chilling, but I didn't realise it was an episode well, of Bloody Brookside. I, uh, yeah, I, I, well, it was a grisly tale. It I, thought would, it, I thought it counts, does it not? Yeah, but not when it's daytime TV, melodrama, oh, you, you soap know, opera. You, you know what, you can just gash. go for... Oh, hello, listener, how are you doing? Hey! Uh, I didn't see you there. Oh, welcome to our caravan. Yes, come on in. Step, step four. Happy Halloween! Yes. Hope, no. you're, um, hope you're ready for some chilling tales, some yeah. spine and... Uh, spine tingling? tingling <laughs> um, stuff. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I'm ready for some ball tingling stuff, Johnny. It's me and you in this caravan. Yeah, it is a bit cosy, isn't it? It is, it is. Yeah, and the only one the bed, this one single bed. Yeah, I mean, basically, I thought it would be a good idea to get out of the, the city for the weekend, you mm. know, have a little cosy up in a caravan. You know, the opportunity presented itself. I thought, why not? I thought we could, you know, do some Halloween stuff. But anyway, um, listener, um, th- thanks for joining us, uh, and welcome to episode 20 of Food to Watch Films Ooh, by. We're 20. Yeah. The big yeah, two, oh. two, two, uh, two lots of tens. Yeah, and if um, if you've not listened to this podcast before, uh, basically we talk about films we've watched and recommend food that we think would help to heighten, enhance, arouse your auditory and visual experience of watching that film. Yeah, so you can really, you know, put yourself in it, delve into it, yeah, get deep into that. Yes. Penetrate that crust. Mm. Get to the meat. Yes, get and inside. Stick that, it in your mouth. That hot filling. But yeah, oh, yeah. so uh, <laughs> my name is Johnny. And my name is Adam. Yes, and we're uh, we're your um, sous chefs, your, well, I your, don't know, your ghostly hosts. <laughs> oh yeah, so you're it's ghost Halloween, ghost. Halloween. Yeah, we yeah, need yes. to keep with that uh, theme, you know. It's uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, I mean, obviously it's Halloween. We've uh, we've yeah. opted for a bit of a, a slasher theme for this one, haven't we? Yeah, a little bit of a psycho killer uh, theme. Let's go see. And you know, and, and what better location than this uh, little caravan? Yeah, here. So yeah. you know, it's cozy. Yeah. It's a got creepy. a ha- haunted wind. The uh, the waves crashing against the rocks. Mm. Uh, yeah. The uh, smell of a uh, fish and chip man around the corner. Um, mm. You know, it's got it all. Yeah, well, you know, the opportunity came up. I thought, why not? Let's yeah. do it. So, you know, I thought it'd be nice for us to spend some time together. It's been a while. So. Mm. But anyway, um, are we going to. Uh, it feels a bit awkward now. What do we do now? I don't know. Should we'll we get to your top five? We've got a segue. Yeah. Adam's top five. Cause 
So yeah, I mean, as it is Halloween, mm-hmm. um, this top five is going to be celebrating um, the spooky and the murderous as we look back on uh, some of the best slasher films, yep. that, that fantastic sub-genre of horror movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, there's there's a couple that um, are in here that are probably uh, predate even the, uh, the genre being defined. I mean, I think mm-hmm. we can both agree that uh, the genre was defined by Halloween, John Carpenter's Halloween. That's, yeah. I mean, prior to that, what set all you know the conventions were, Psycho, Peeping Tom, you know, the Black Christmas. Black. Well, was, funny yeah. you should say that because you're already preempting one of my uh, top, oh, okay, top, sorry, top five sorry. into there. And you know, the film that we're going to be discussing later, uh, the town that, that dreaded sundown. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it, it kind of set that blueprint a little bit for what would later become mm. um, into the late seventies. Yeah, slasher movies and yeah. into Which the 80s. Halloween brought big time didn't exactly. it? changed exactly and then we got to the 80s Everything. 90s started becoming a little bit saturated with lower quality ones 2000s were trying to rehash some of the early 70s stuff and there's a few disappointing ones there huh. so what I really want to focus on in these top 5 is you know when, uh, Halloween's a given as a great film Friday the 13th you know mm-hmm. Freddy Jason those are iconic slashers mm-hmm. but there's also some great slasher films out there mm. that don't really get the recognition that they yeah. deserve. So there's a lot of underrated films which I uh, I'm going to celebrate with this top five. So this is my top five underrated slasher flicks. Ooh. Mm. So a few honourable mentions because the pool is pretty deep mm. when we look at these flicks. Uh, so I'm just going to reel a few off. Go um, for it. One that we reviewed last Christmas. Last Christmas. Oh, yeah. Uh, Silent, Silent Night, Night, Deadly Night. S- oh, yeah. Silent, Silent Night, Deadly. <laughs> what were you about to say? <laughs> I don't know. Silent, Silent, Silent but Night. Deadly. <laughs> Silent Night, Deadly. We, Night. we could do a film, though, Silent but Deadly. Could do. We could do that. Like really a mime it. artist who just yeah. stalks and, and kills. No, You're not up for that? Terrible, no. I'll get funding from elsewhere then. Just Fuck you. carry on. Uh, a trauma production here, Graduation Day. Yes. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alice Sweet Alice, mm. female slasher, female zero killer. Yep. So Brooke, Brooke Quite Shields, a, creepy a young Brooke Shields, mask. I think, who yeah. was in that. Yeah. Um, Torso, again, another early 70s mm. one. And as we mentioned before, Need to mention it because we're going to be discussing it later on. It's got to get an honourable mention. Uh, the uh, town that dreaded sundown. Yeah. So, just a few honourable mentions. A few honourable mentions. Okay. Number five. Number five. I've gone for um, early eighties. Mm. Madman. No, sorry, shit. Sorry, Madman. Madman. No, it's Madman. 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 Not Madman. Madman. Not Mad Men. No, not the Don, John Don Draper's Mad not Mad there. Mad Mad drinking an old-fashioned woman. I and think. if he did, he'd be grab dead ass because he'd get his face. Yeah, this is a it's a, it, it's a traditional campfire esque. And you mean campfire, not like ooh campfire? Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. What Please you're continue. About. I will do. Um, it's yeah, it's a classic campfire sort of uh, tale, you know, uh, lurking in the uh, in deep in the woods. Uh, there's a mad man. Yes, and he's um, very mad. Yeah, and they're telling ghost stories, and then that leads to uh, uh, murder and mayhem. <laughs> God, um, a bit like what we're doing. To, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, production value. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. uh, late is slasher horror um, entertainment value. Yeah, it's definitely worth a watch. Okay. So, uh, well worth putting on your uh, um, Halloween horror watch list. On your Schindler's list. Schindler's list. Number four? Now, number four, I've gone for a bit of a um, sort of more recent franchisey um, flick. Um, the uh, the Hatchet films. Okay. Uh, by, uh, I, 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 must admit, I haven't seen any of the Hatchet films. But, yeah, um, by, by uh, writer, director uh, Adam Green. Uh, there's been a few of them, again, varying in quality. There's a new one out, which is. Um, Victor Crawley, um, so you know, which is the name of their uh, uh, the psycho killer um, in the films. Um, but again, worth a watch. Very entertaining. Uh, a lot of gore there. Certainly, it'll be a favourite one for uh, uh, for Pablo uh, to look at as well. Yeah, indeed. Okay, so that's number four. Yeah. 
Number three. Number three. What well, you mentioned it earlier, you preempted it. Uh-huh. Black Christmas. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Black Christmas. Christmas. I killed you. And no, I gave stuff. you my heart. You could say that. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I took it. Out. Out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I took I out your I heart. Killed you. And the very <laughs> next day, I chopped you, off you your You were dead. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's a brilliant film. Black yeah, yeah, but it's, it's, it is, you know, dark. Hence the name Black, and it's Christmassy. Mm-hmm. Kind of. Um, no, it's, I mean, it is, again, it's, it's uh, a lot of focus around the kind of psychological aspects of, of, of um, serial killers or um, stalking, stalking and, and killing, yeah. Um, vulnerable women. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's, that, there's that, that trend of, you know, sort of vulnerable, linking in with sort of teenage antics and sex and, mm. you know, some sort of, you know, sa- sexual gratification, um, you know, psychosexual... Qu'est-ce que c'est? <laughs> but yeah, Black Christmas, I mean, certainly worth a watch. Yeah. Um, no, it's again, a, it's, it's a good piece of cinema um, all awesome around. One. Yeah. Uh, and very underrated. Very underrated, as are all of these. Uh, number two. Number two. A film I've only watched recently, but I've heard a lot of people going about and it's gone straight to number two because I was impressed. It's a bit of a slow burner coming into it, but I've gone for pieces. Uh, yeah, I didn't get a chance to watch this. Yeah. You should, I, I saw the trailer, it looked crazy. Yeah, it, it is messed up. I say it's slow burn, I mean, you are straight into decapitation, but I mean, for it to actually get traction in terms of an engaging storyline. Yeah, well, um, I, I mean, yeah, that sounds good, you know. I, I never really persevere with film unless there's decapitation within at least oh, yeah. the first three minutes. Yeah, you've got decapitation, and you've essentially got decapitation. You've, got, you've got a serial killer um, who's going around college campus um, collecting pieces of women you know head legs torso etc building um, his own little perfect woman mm-hmm. uh, also has a thing for jigsaws um, so uh, yeah and if you know if you are watching it stick with it because you need to stay until the end okay you need to stay until the end um, takes me to uh, to number one number one now just this is a fairly recent one Fairly, fairly recent, about ten years old, probably now. Mm-hmm. We've gone for uh, Behind the Mask: The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Oh, I think this is massively underrated as a film. It's a bit of a um, uh, sort of a, a, a for documentary, mockumentary, whatever the hell you want to call it. Mm. Um, and it's it's interesting because it's playing on all the conventions of classic slasher movies. You know, it's done in the uh, in 2000 so you know we're already aware of where um, you know what to expect within a slasher film you know Scream Scream played on that quite a bit didn't it in its storyline uh, but you know it's a, cam- uh, it's a documentary team who follow um, a, a serial killer slasher um, and you know start um, you know sort of going through how he prepares to, to stalk his victims and why and the centralised character is a serial killer mm. um, you know dark humour but also some, some some generally scary bits as he turns on to you know the camera crew and as you see him you know kind of um, go from this uh, quite engaging character um, speaking directly to the camera to camera crew then into uh, full on serial killer mode. Um, so some great performances, some really interesting concepts, and I think it's, it's massively underrated, uh, which is why it gets my uh, number one slot. Number one, yeah. Well, there we go. Well, uh, thanks for that, Adam, and. Um, uh, I, I suppose one that I would just like to add to that because it's one that I, I enjoyed very much again, which is an underrated one, is a, a Sleepaway Camp. Oh, with, you know, uh, what? I've not seen that. No, it's uh, yeah, it's got a fantastic twist. But anyway, I, w- I won't uh, say anymore. Yeah, I mean, that's it. We we'll keep going, keep going. Yeah, the, the pool is huge. You could get too so deep many. and drowned in uh, in a pool but, of uh, blood. But you, you know, if you completely disagree with Adam and you hate him <laughs> and you want to actually stab him in the face. <laughs> Um, Michael My- Michael Myers yes Michael Myers that's, 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 that's Mike not Myers. Mike Myers <laughs> no, no, <I> <laughs> Michael Myers yeah, style yeah. <laughs> I, um, uh, you can or you could uh, tweet us at FTWFB podcast with uh, an alternative top five or um, anything else you'd like to throw at us um, we will yeah. embrace it yeah so um, shall we move on <sighs> yeah let's do it let's go It is happening again. It is happening again. Good 
spin, 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 yes. Uh. How do, how do? Pablo here with another cupboard cast. Now, you may notice the inflection there in cupboard cast. Uh, that's basically because I am not in a house today. I'm not trying to get inside a cupboard within a house. Today, I'm out and about on the streets of Glasgow trying to track down the homeless community um, in uh, the city centre uh, where I've been basically informed that the Crankies, uh, 1980s double act of uh, a wee boy, wee Jimmy Cranky, and his dad, Ian Cranky, um, obviously um, did lots of children's television, lots of pantos in the 80s, lots of fun. Um, in reality, they are actually a husband and wife team, uh, Jeanette Cranky and Ian Cranky, which makes it a little bit weird, but um, we, we have the different times and all that. Um, unfortunately these days they don't seem to be um, doing so well so uh, I've heard reports they're living on the streets um, within a cardboard city of sort underneath a bridge so I'm just coming around the corner to find the bridge now yeah, looking underneath, there doesn't seem to be anybody there usual trappings of uh, a cardboard city there uh, you've got the kind of oil drums there uh, burning away, lots of cardboard boxes uh, the old shopping cart full of stuff that kind of thing uh, right, well, um, now I know what you're thinking, there's no cupboard, what are you going to do? Well, what I've done is I've fashioned myself a suit made out of cardboard, which when in the sitting position makes us look like a cardboard box. Genius, I know. Um, so I'll just find a little corner here, a little sit down. Now, whilst I'm waiting for people to turn up, um, I would love to recommend a uh, Mr Biffo's found footage on YouTube. Uh, Mr Biffo of Digitizer fame, old Teletext page there. Um, yeah, it's basically found some VHSs in some car boot sales and down the country and cobbled them together into uh, some strange, strange stuff. Um, available on YouTube. Uh, there's quite a few episodes out now. The current series has finished, but there is due to be uh, more in the future. So uh, check that out. Um, Mr. Biffo also on Twitter, at Mr. Biffo. Um, fans of Tim and Eric's awesome show, um, kind of breaking with the form, um, that kind of thing, will very much enjoy this. Um, and also, if you've never even heard of that, you should still like it too. Um, yeah, so find that out. And, um, yeah, so, oh, quite a large commotion. Lots of homeless people following. Looks like Jeanette at the front there. She's, uh, she's dressed, kind of got a toga-type thing. Um, much like Ryu from Street Fighter, it's probably not Tonga. Uh, kind of like, you know, karate pyjamas, that kind of thing. Uh, looks like she's ready for a fight. Um, she's now been circled by a, by a group of... Oh, I can just see through there. Ian's going around collecting small amounts of money and foodstuffs. Uh, looks like some sort of bet. Um, oh, the crowd's part on one side. Who's this coming through? Oh, two very burly gentlemen. Um... As I say, it looks like some sort of fight club for money. Um, I think she's bitten off more than she can chew here. The circle's closing on the other side. Little bell there. Oh, well. oh. That was uncomfortable viewing, even for me. Um, but uh, I can report that Jeanette is fine. The other two gentlemen. Um, I can only speculate. Um, Right, I'm going to have to take a moment and assess here. Maybe, maybe draw some pictures for later, later use. Um, anyway, I digress. Um, back to the show. Okay, Adam. Um, I suppose it's time for another tale, another slasher movie tale. Tales Another from the tale crypt. Of a, a maniac, uh, 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 murderous madman. Yeah, on the prowl. Mm. This one as well. Mm. Although dramatization based on a true story, which Indeed. makes it, you know, even more horrific. Yeah. Um, it's the uh, the town that dreaded sundown. Yes. Um, which um, oh not to be well the one we watched is the 1976 version there is a remake from the original well, it's not really a remake as well is it it's it's, it's a um, uh, it's, I don't know I've not watched yeah, it yeah no it's, it, what what they do is it's, it's following on sort of 60 years on oh. and he's back oh he's so back so it starts adding that supernatural element uh. with it you know much like with 
um, you know, Halloween and Michael Myers and characters like that. It's not just a psycho killer on the loose. Guess could say. There's <laughs> <laughs> already so many times we could use that <laughs> gag. But it's also, you know, it's, there's also a supernatural bent to it. This is possibly mm. evil yeah. incarnate. Incarnate, yeah. yeah. But the original, um, yeah. set in uh, Texarkana, um, mm. Texas, and um, a small town. Uh, sleepy town. A small sleepy town. Post-war, yeah. 1946. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's, it's all about uh, the young folk, the rock and roll kids, um, doing that, you know, parking up in their cars and a bit of late night, you know, shingles. And, and one night, um, a, a, a couple have parked up in the woodland area and they're soon pounced and attacked by a, a, a madman with a bag on his head um, uh, and, and in that opening scene I don't think of so much screaming <laughs> do you know what I mean there's uh, there's a lot of screaming I was I was watching this uh, with I mean the, the, the walls on my house are quite thin mm. I will say that and I have the volume up mm. Um, did you find yourself turning it down in case the you th- did you get the neighbours might think you were actually killing someone? Cause yeah, I, because uh, in preparation for this, I've been lot, watching a lot of slasher <laughs> films, so I'm, I'm generally worried. I did lower it down because I thought they're going to think I'm hurting somebody. <laughs> yeah, really, the police are going to be knocking on the door, yeah. and then and then the dog was barking, and it was just yeah, yeah. So uh, I, uh, every time there was a killing scene, I started uh, lowering the volume down, yeah. but sound plays a big part in this film it does I think I mean we've got this hooded killer mm. you know literally Maniac. yeah that that kind of and again the fact that it's based on a true story makes it even more horrific but yeah. you know you, you can only, only signs of sort of the you know human beneath it are the little tiny eye holes there mm. but when the killer comes what the, what the, uh, the director does is he, the, he increases the volume of the the killer's breathing. Mm. That that becomes more and more impending as is you know that impending doom this, this, as he starts looming over his victim, draws you in. And it, it, even though you know, all right, this is nineteen. What what year was it? Nineteen seventy six was it? Mm. Um, you know, it's it, there's not a lot of gore in here. No, but you do start to feel a little bit terrified just purely because as that as that breathing intensifies yeah. it's almost animalistic isn't it when it's when it's happening oh yeah and, and i think compared to some of you know like the um jason Voorhees, friday yeah. the 13th supernatural kind of um unstoppable being this is just a guy um so yeah. and that kind of makes it a little bit creepy because it's you know he's not um indestructible or um yeah he's just a guy who's clearly got a problem <laughs> yeah and I would say the, 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 the remake or reimagining um, coming into yeah. into you know 2000s did play upon this oh he's back and it's a supernaturally type mm. of possibility there but I mean this film is almost serves as a little bit of a bit of a mini documentary in a way yeah. uh, and reenactment of it um, yeah, yeah, you've got that narration throughout yeah you? the narration throughout yeah, talking about factual points that that night, yeah yeah you know, it's um, and that that made it a bit more chilling knowing that mm. the, these events, although dramatized, um, you know, I've watched documentaries on it since, and yeah, it was pretty pretty accurate from what I can make out. Um, mm. You know, it turned a, a sleepy town um, upside down, and the, the, literally, as the title suggests, the uh, entire town were were engulfed in this. And I think how many it killed five people in total? I think throughout the course of yeah. his uh, reign of terror. Yeah, I, I think that's another thing as well. Is that, yeah, some slasher films, obviously, it's just body count, isn't it? Where yeah. this is, you know, yeah, there's, there's not much, um, but when it is, it's you know, uh, yeah, pretty pretty horrific, really, isn't it? And then well, yeah, some choice weapons, does he not? One of the most bizarre, <laughs> <laughs> bizarre murder scenes, and I don't know. I mean, that seems too bizarre to be made up. That it, it must have been taken from factual, you know, accounts. But um, you know, one of the poor victims is is. After a, a, a lover is shot dead, mm. she's tied to a tree and then murdered by a trombone yeah. or trumpet, tr- trombone, yeah, trombone, trombone, trombone. trombone. Um, you know, as he's extending the trombone arm, there's a knife. Yeah, there's a knife fixed to the end of it, and that's what's stabbing her. So, mm. um, yeah, I I, actually, one thing I was thinking about it is because um, he just sort of 
picks it up though, doesn't he? He's kind of like because he, yeah, where was he, he chases that? them down. He, um, you know, she's obviously ran off, and and then he's like, you know, cornered her, got her there, and suddenly he's got this trombone. But where, where the hell did that come <laughs> it, from? He'd he been hanging case for it. Bearing in mind, it'd, it'd been hanging off the car for <laughs> probably <laughs> yeah, yeah. conservatively about four hundred meters. Yeah. So he's miles away from where he started off. He I couldn't mean, maybe, possibly but, predict that that would have been the crash point and the point where the murder would take place. I mean, maybe he's just got various brass instruments hidden in the trees and just <laughs> yeah. just happened that you know it was close yeah. to one of them. And yeah, uh, exactly. It'd have been it'd have been a saxophone further up, a yeah, clarinet yeah, yeah. round yeah. around corner, but, but she would just happened tuba up on yeah. yeah it was the the, the, the trombone point um, but yeah very uh, bizarre choice certainly a, a first in, in you know and cinema I, murders and I think what's really eerie as well is because when you see him first pick it up you're expecting that comedy <laughs> of a trombone yeah. but nothing it's just <laughs> Uh, yeah, because he's blowing through the hood, so it's yeah, like there's, yeah. there's no there's no lip purchase <laughs> yeah, yeah, on there true, to make the size. So it's just a little. So uh, you know, and, and later on, we um, there's a um, psychi- psychiatrist sort of uh, making an assessment about you know some sort of gratification that he gets from that type of play and his sort of sadistic mm. imagination. But still, that's a fucking weird thing to to think of. Uh. You know, but you know, I suppose marks of creativity and all that. Mm. Um, but you know, would we? I know we we put this in in as a film of choice around slasher films. I mean, this is before, as we mentioned before, before the the, the genre was actually defined. Mm. You know, the, yeah, the Halloween followed closely after, but exactly. I mean, you know, it's it's a it's a murder mystery. I mean, the 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 the, the difference between the slasher films and this film is that a lot of it is based around the solving of the murder so it's mm. based around the police department um, but also it impacting how it impacts the community as opposed to a small group of people who are the main protagonists fighting this evil presence however it does still give the you know one of the one of the earliest glimpses of that kind of stalker maniac character which undoubtedly would have been an influence Surely for John Carpenter coming up to to that mm. sort of film, aside from things like Psycho, in terms of no. the filmmaking side of it, these sort of events must have influenced those type of you know yeah. film filmmaking. I, yeah, I, I enjoyed this. So yeah. It was um, yeah, no, it, it was good because I, I know we were quite tempted to go for like a real like gore fest slasher film, you know, which uh, amazing, you know, like I, I, I am a big fan of the let's see how many different and more inventive ways we can kill people yeah. where this this was just it, it was just it was a good atmosphere the, the fact that it was yeah a true story helped as well but yeah and it just it, it wasn't over the top and it wasn't too much it wasn't all about the killing and when it was about the killing it was it was pretty um yeah it was disturbing there were some comical bits in as well you know uh, the, the, it wasn't without comic relief you mm. know you got the like the, the, the police um uh, sergeant guy the uh, a spark plug Oh, the, yeah, the, yeah, the new rookie to the police is a bit of comic relief there but yeah dr- dresses in drag to try and yeah, lure yeah. the killer in uh, there's some nice comic beats uh, um, so yeah, it's a nice well rounded mm. film I'd say you know the, the suspense there's, there's, there's you know scares there's jumps um, but there's a, there's a good you know sp- bit of comedy there and a bit of a you know police drama sort of thrown into it mm. um so no I thought it was quite a well balanced film and it's, it's good to see you know post slasher films mm. pl- post a genre you know th- these type of films and say first time that either of us have seen it so mm. uh, yeah no I'd, I'd certainly encourage anybody to uh, to go out search this and uh you know it's out there it's available on demand i'm sure yeah but um, aye. but that I, I think that moves us on to our film. Yeah. Uh, sorry, our food recommendations. It's food recommendations. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, would you like to go first or? Yeah. I, yeah. No, um, I'll, I'll I'll get straight into that. Mm. So I've gone for a, a straight out dessert mm. um, this time, um, and I've gone for a, an apple crumble. Oh. Okay. I was yeah. going to make one of them earlier, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, I I had one last night, but it, this is in no way influenced my decision. I promise you. But. As I was eating my apple crumble last night, I got to thinking, you know, this is pretty representative of the movie in the a lot of the film is based around how these murders affect the community. And, you know, this this traditional all American town in this post Second World War boom, um, you know, what what could be more representative of that food wise? American pie. American pie. Mm. But there's a twist. 
because uh, this little wholesome American town has, has, has been sorry th- this small little little town has been turned upside down and smashed destroyed its community crumbling mm. slashed um, you know and if you do that physically to an apple pie. pie you get something along the lines of an apple crumble oh so that, <laughs> that was my thought process <laughs> <laughs> behind the choice of an apple crumble you know we couldn't just serve them by apple pie because it's been tarnished mm. you know it's, it's been it's been demolished almost savagely by this killer um, and um, I feel that the, an apple crumble represents that you could even have um, they, don't they say in the police reports that um, one of his victims a woman um, has bite marks on her breasts you could yeah. have like you know little bite marks around the side of the pie yeah. maybe nibbled at nibbled, nibbled at yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nibbling, nibbling. And some sexual gratification of nibbling at a, yeah, a, a maybe man's, like man's a, destroyed crumble a hole poked into the pie a la um, American, you know, American pie, pie yeah, yeah. <laughs> warm so, apple pie yeah. oh, I don't think I'd want to eat that to be honest no, um, no. But. okay but yeah, yeah, what about yourself, Johnny? Well, I, I, um, I suppose like I've done in the past, I've tried to think of you know a food experience to help okay. kind of um, bring the film to life through the food that you eat. And um, so what I was going to say is um, having w- having watched the film, this is something you wouldn't eat whilst watching it. I mean, you can do. You can maybe time it in, in a sense. But uh, yeah, I, I'd recommend you know putting an ad out there, inviting um, a complete stranger to come into your house and cook your dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, but it has to be anonymous. You, you can't see or know who the person is um, when you invite them in. They've got to you know, wear either a bag on their head or some some form of disguise. Come on in, uh, and then you know it's it's letting them cook whatever. Um, you don't know. You don't know what they're going to serve you. Again, maybe yeah. it's wrapped up and it's delivered to you. Uh, it could be something that you're allergic to. It might be something you really don't like. They might have poisoned it. Who knows? But that's that's part of you know the taking the risk and, and and overcoming that fear. You know, maybe they stand over heavy breathing while you're eating it. I don't know. But yeah, that'd be an uncomfortable eating experience, wouldn't it? Just well, some, exactly. some guy with a potato sack on his head just. <laughs> <laughs> breathing heavily in your yeah. ear yeah and not, not able to say anything either so you know even if you ask for the salt maybe they pass it to you but you know, they wouldn't say anything but um, yeah so just creating an uncomfortable eating experience an anonymous eating experience and um, you know and uh, yeah if you suffer the next day that yeah. person will disappear and you know there'll always be a mystery wow so that was uh, that was my recommendation. Yeah, I mean, if, if that's going to be a theme of your next uh, re- restaurant venture, um, yeah, well, I, d- I don't know if I'm prepared I mean, to financially about that. If I'm honest, but um, no, I, no it's, it, it serves its purpose for this for the suggestion. And I'm not, I'm probably not doing um, e-safety justice. You know that kind of you know safe awareness online and you know, <laughs> promoting getting strangers into your house or what have you. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, no, I like that. I like yeah. that. It's pretty good. Um, so. so yeah, g- give it a watch and eat one of them. Yeah, the, g- give it a watch. It certainly is worth worth watching. You know, uh, the, the the remake, reimagine, or whatever you want to call it. Give that a watch as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, enjoy your Halloween experience. Yeah, with some dicked apple pie and uh, anonymous chef, <laughs> hooded chef, the phantom chef. Yeah. Shall we move on? Let's. <laughs> Gentlemen, your conversation makes interesting listening. Starbursts. 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 Is it, are, Star- you, are you trying to do Candyman? What? It's not Starbursts. You don't just pick a, a random sweet product and oh. start saying it in there. Oh, it's a Candyman. I still call them up for the fruits oh. anyway. Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah, no, no. Is that what I you're know, doing? No, no, I know there's uh, Candyman. No, no, apparently there, there is a bit of a myth that if you stand in front of a mirror and say Starburst five times, a guy will appear behind you. Um, I, I think apparently it's, uh, you know, yeah, obviously it used to be called Opal Fruits. Apparently the guy who came up with that name was a bit disgruntled when they changed it and... Um, Apparently he's been on a bit of a rampage, you know, killing anyone who uses the term Starburst. What does so. it kill him? I think he forces them to eat Starburst until they sort of sugar rush, die, you know, 
But does he call him Oprah for us when he's false feeding him? Oh, of course he does. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the whole. That's his whole thing. You know? <laughs> that's his whole bag. <laughs> yeah. So terrifying. Um, Absolutely terrifying. But I'm, I'm kind of glad you st- stopped me actually on that. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Well, I think. Yeah. I could, could see it was. Uh, yeah. But uh, oh, hang on. Talking of serial killers, how's he got your number? I don't know. Pa- Pablo. How do, chaps? You're right, Hi, mate. You're all right. Yeah, good, good. Can't grumble. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. On a, on a just pleasant rainy night. Yeah, well, I was just um, sitting here, um, just working through some of my laundry, doing a bit of washing. Oh, yeah. Just thought I'd give you, the, give you the bell um, in between loads. Mm. Oh, good. Washing the whites, are you? Well, no, I found a long time ago it's, it's pretty pointless having anything white in uh, my stock and trade. But um, generally get spoiled quite quickly, so I've generally gone for mostly leather or you know pleather type of uh, type of gear. Mm. Sounds very gimpish. <laughs> uh, it, um, it it it's more kind of like your aprons and um, kind of uh, you know I don't know crow like trousers. Mm. Eric Drayton from the Crow. Um, right, yeah. I've got to pour myself into them a little bit, but uh, you know I find. Um, the allure of a, um, a glint of uh, black leather in the uh, in a street light or, or moonlight when somebody's uh, um, glancing over the shoulder in a panicked uh, panicked fashion kind of ha- kind of helps the old uh, the old picture. Mm. Mm. Okay, nice. Uh, and, and, and and for listeners who've not listened to this podcast before, um, just so you're aware, uh, Pablo he kills people. We we, we think. I mean, yeah. it's well, uh, yeah, it's it's believed. It is, yeah, understood. That, um, no, but uh, it's quite good timing, actually, this, Pablo, because um, I, I was just about to explain, um, yeah, um, Adam, basically, there's a, a slight ulterior motive as to, to why um, I've put this caravan for us, and uh, by all means, Pablo, um, uh, you might be able to assist with this. Um, you know, when I was a kid growing up, um, I used to watch a lot of the news, and, and Moira Stewart, you know, I've got uh, quite... Um, affection for is it the voice well, you're well, turned on by the Mo- voice Mo- Mo- Moira Stewart and, and basically this is Moira Stewart's caravan um, oh so is that why you why you, why you rented the caravan in Holland yeah well legend has it that following her retirement from TV news presenting Moira relocated to this small East Yorkshire town of Hornsey um, taking up residence in this humble caravan that we're sitting in right now she loves Hornsey mm-hmm. well known fact she goes on about it on Radio 2 all the time well, it, uh, it's quite a place. Um, but during her residence here, she would spend most of her days watching retro slasher films and profiling each of the movie's murderous maniacs as a means to prepare herself in the event that she might ever get, you know, be required to defend herself against a supernatural serial killer. Well, w- why not? Um, I guess living in a place such as so you'd probably instill such a sense of self-preservation in anyone spending more than a couple of hours here, I guess. It's pretty weird. Um, anyway, news soon caught on with the local townsfolk and shortly, a- shortly after uh, Moira disappeared from her caravan leaving only her worldly goods and the research she has accumulated on each of those movie monsters she'd been obsessing over. Um, police investigations soon followed, um, leading only to speculation as to what had happened to Moira. Uh, some believe she was taken by one of those supernatural killers that she'd been profiling. Brutally butchered, her remains stuffed inside a wheelie bin and cast into the sea or something horrific like that. Others simply think she might have just gone away for a few days and not told anyone. Probably forgot to cancel the milk. Yeah, but anyway. I'll find out on Monday if she's on radio too. Yeah, well, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, either way, we're here now. Um, and uh, I, I think it, it's up to us to find out. You know, we, we need to uncover the mystery behind okay. her sudden disappearance. I'm down with us, yeah. So, um, around the caravan are a number of items for us to investigate each including a question to be answered or a challenge to be completed and depending on how we answer these questions it might uh, or complete the challenges it will determine whether we'll uncover the the mystery of Moira Stewart's caravan of death the news now on BBC One Scotland with Moira Stewart oh, yeah. on a cold winter's evening I like to treat myself to a jacket potato Moira Stewart, with a melted baby. Kit Kat on top yo we're trying to uncover the mystery of Moira Stewart's history you know, I've killed a lot of people BBC News, 1981 to 2007 June. Uh, Paul Allen. I killed Paul Allen with an axe shot in the face. His body is dissolving in a bathtub in Hell's kitchen. With a melted Kit Kat on top. So essentially there's ten points up for grabs. 
as long as we get five points, we'll be able to find out what happened to Moira. I, um, <laughs> weirdly, I can't help with the question answering, but it's up to you guys to, uh, to figure it out. So, there's five main areas to investigate. Uh, which one do you want to choose first? We have the main living compartment, the kitchenette, the shitter, the sleeping compartment, or would you like to go outside? Adam, do you want to choose first? I'm going straight to the shitter. Yeah? Sound good, Pablo? I figure... Um, uh, you can go for the if you want, I figure yeah. at her age, she's probably going to make be making a few trips to the uh, to the lavatory. The literary. So, <laughs> the literary. so I would, I'd, yeah, I'd, I think there'll be, you know, there'll be at least DNA there. Okay, let, well, let's go on through. So, as you can see, a, a small chemical toilet. Looks like there's something floating inside it. Um, as yeah, well as a bottle of Mr. Muscle's uh, lime scented bleach on the side. Uh, which item do you want to explore? The toilet or the bleach? <sighs> Come on, let's just do it. Let's just go to, to the floater. Yeah? Yeah, okay. Pablo, are you happy, happy with the floater? Yeah, I'll, I'll happily, uh, happily check the boy and see if that floater. Okay, okay. We're, we're both doing that. So, so um, uh, well, do you want to reach in and grab it? Do we, do we not get any like, gloves or anything? No, 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 no. It's reaching quick. Right. Oh, oh, oh. oh, pass it over. Yeah. Oh, looks like a question. <laughs> that was horrendous. Sorry. What um, does Marge Stewart eat? Ah, okay. Oh, yes. Okay, this looks like some of Moira's research. Let me just... Uh, okay. So, question for you guys. And uh, I'll tell you what we'll do. First person to give me the answer and the correct answer... We'll get the point. We'll go through it that way, shall we? Yeah. Okay. No, that, that, that makes sense. Okay. So, um, in the 1981 film *The Burning*, the serial killer lies waiting in a canoe until a raft full of teens conveniently happen upon it, and he soon pounces and swiftly takes them all out in a painful manner. But what is his weapon of choice? Oh. Go on. Uh, are you giving his multiple choice, or is it shears? It is shears. Yes. Uh, All right. One, <laughs> that's one point to to, to Adam. Yes. <laughs> no, it's fair. I, 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 that one slipped me. Well, she had me by, so to speak. Mm. Straight into that. <laughs> okay, guys. So that's one point. And um, where would you like to explore for uh, next? Sorry, Pablo. I'll let you choose this time. So, do you want to go back to the main living compartment, kitchenette? Uh, I think I'll try the um, the um, the bedroom. Oh, the. Room. Always, it's always a good place to check when you're uh, when you're entering somebody else's property. Okay, so you enter the bedroom. I mean, this is a caravan, so it's not really a bedroom. It's more like a, a small sleeping compartment, pretty much just a bed. Um, there's a pile of Moira's dirty clothing and a, a copy of Ted Bundy's biography on the side. Which item would you like to explore first? Mm, well, you know, Bundy, the, uh, the 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 ladies' man of serial killing. I, I would like to check him. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Moira's been uh, underlining the odd passage here or there. Okay. Um, uh, I'll tell you what, Adam. Do you want to reach over and grab the grab the book for me, uh, Mitch? Yeah, yeah. Just be a little bit, Sean. Wow, is that a heavy book or something? <laughs> it's, it's a big book. It is a lot, a lot of killing. Okay. Oh, um, uh, lo and behold, inside the book, there's a question. Okay. So, um, are, are you guys ready for this one? Yeah. Fingers Prime. on the buzzers. Uh, oh, and um, um, I'll tell you what, let, let, let's resort to buzzer sounds. Of sa uh, give me your horrific screaming of death. When? when? On part one. Uh, well, not right now. Oh. Oh. Uh, mine's mine's going to be. Oh. Cool. <laughs> okay, so question, guys. In the 1974 film Black Christmas, which is often regarded as the first real proper slasher film, um, which centres around a group of young women spending the Christmas period together in the sorority house, uh, soon plagued by dodgy phone calls, um, and obviously then picked off one by one by um, by a killer. Um, but which of the following items does he use to kill the character Barb with? Is it A, a brass monkey, B, a glass unicorn head, C, a South American carved wooden penis, or D, a banana? Yeah. Um, B unicorn head. Yep. 
Oh, you didn't give me the, uh, the <laughs> sound. Yeah. Unicorn head. <laughs> oh, unicorn head. I do. I'll let Pablo have that one just okay. to, to, no, to no, see if like that one. one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pablo, as soon as you, wa- you got that point, do you want to choose the next location? Or do you want uh, to continue uh, to, to, to um, explore the bedroom? Oh, well, I'll, I'll delve about Moira Smalls if that's uh, permissible. Okay, uh, Moira Smalls it is. Um, we'll, uh, oh, I'll just pick up a pair of her uh, discarded attire. <laughs> Crotchless panties, Moira, you kinky devil, you. Mm. Ah. Yes. Okay. Um, ah, and, uh, actually, probably you might like this question. I've just found it stapled to the back of those crotchless panties. So, in the 1960 film Peeping Tom, Mark's character is revealed to be a, a scopophiliac. But what does scopophilia mean? It, it likes to watch through lenses voyeurism voyeuristic pleasure for a telescope <laughs> okay you, you got that with the voyeurism I was going to yeah. say that wasn't the definition as such but yeah you said voyeurism so, yeah, okay, okay. Okay. No, no, I enjoyed the question but um, I, I couldn't quite pin it down in my head so um, better play Adam yeah, so that's 2-1 to Adam uh, where would you like to go next Adam we've still got the main compartment the kitchenette or the uh, or outside um you know, we're a food and film prog- uh, uh, podcast. Let's uh, go for the kitchenette. Okay. So, we wander into the kitchenette. Uh, typical kitchenette, isn't it? Uh, uh, oh, as you can see, there's a half-empty packet of sugar puffs on the side. A small pin board on, on, on the wall as well with a picture. Jimmy Savile, Frank Bruno and Peter Sutcliffe posing together in Broadmoor Prison. It's a bit of a weird... Um, choice <laughs> What's for, Frank for Bruno doing there? Um, uh, which item would you like to... Um, Investigate, Adam. <laughs> um, what from Bruno? Oh, the, the, the picture. The picture. The picture yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's reach over and uh, oh, look. Oh. <laughs> Weirdly, on the back of the picture, there's a question. Oh well, convenient. Okay, so um, remember, guys. First to answer. Uh, who rapped about Freddy Krueger in 1988? Was it A? LL Cool J, B Will Smith, C Ice T, or D Jimmy Savile. <laughs> oh, <laughs> was it A? I'm afraid it wasn't. What were the options again? A LL Cool J, B Will Smith, C Ice T, D Jimmy Savile. <laughs> um, Ice T. Afraid it wasn't. So that's okay. that, that incorrect on both your parts. I'm there, just thinking so, uh, of area. It's not Will Smith. Either. It was Will Smith. Was it Will Smith. Yeah, it was Will Smith. So no point for that one. So um, what are we on? Is it two one to Adam? Who is it? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, neither of us got a point for that. Oh, sorry, okay, Myra. No one got that. But uh, Pablo, I'll, I'll let you choose the, the next location. Do you want to continue in the kitchenette or uh, main compartment, maybe? Or? Um. Yeah. Well, I suppose that's when the, the kitchenette will be in the main area I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go to the main general living area okay. so have, a, have a rummage through Moira's main compartment <laughs> so we wander oh. back into the main compartment and uh, to the right you can see a Sanyo TV and video combi uh, with a stack of videos next to it we also have various papers scattered on the floor uh, oh and look as well a small piece of something that looks a little like a sausage poking out <laughs> from underneath one of the sofa, sofa cushions which item would you like to uh Investigate, Pablo. Oh, I'll, I'll always go for a bit of meat if I can see it. Uh, I see it protruding from, um, from well, especially if it's from a seat. Oh, uh, um, Adam, do you want to reach down and grab that sausage? What the? F- it's a bit moist. Oh, um, oh, looks quite tasty. This. Oh, oh, oh weirdly, um, on the back of the the sausage is another question. Okay, are you ready, guys? Yeah. In the final yep, yep. in the final scene of the 1983 film Sleepaway Camp, the film takes a bit of a twist when a disturbing secret is revealed about the character Angela. But what is the secret? <laughs> Pablo? It's a he's a fella. She's a he. Yep, she's a he. That's she's exactly a he, she, right. Or a, she's a, a he. Hermaphrodite. I think it's a, she, she may be a hermaphrodite, I think. Yep. 
Oh, I've just thought Adam hasn't watched the film yet, which is a bit of a shame. But anyway, well, spoiler that's, alert! That's, 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 that's totally, totally ruined, <laughs> ruined the whole, whole list. list. <laughs> the, the whole that's my Halloween oh, ruined. We've, we've totally ruined that film for you. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry. I was going to watch it on, on Halloween. <laughs> Okay, so so that's that's two points each. Um, so should we say the next next <laughs> the next right answer is a winner? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, so Pablo, you get to choose again. Um, do you want to keep exploring the main living compartment, or do you want to go outside? Well, as the late great George Michael once said, "Let's go outside." Oh. Okay, let's go outside. So, I so think he had a different meaning for it than, than, than this instance. But we, uh, do, we yeah, don't know what's well. working outside for us, Pablo. It won't make it too good, potentially. Okay. Well, I'll put your coat on. Okay. Oh, God, flipping and freezing out here. Mate, it's October. Oh, in, in Why did you have to say to go out here? East York. East of... Um, so as you can see, uh, Caravan Park, what have you. Look, um, tree right in front of us. There seems to be um, a, a, a knife stuck right in the tree. Okay. So it's a bit, a bit off, isn't it? I'll get that. A comedy knife, nice. Uh, let's have a look at. Oh, very conveniently, there's a question written on the side of the knife. It's, it's beginning to be a theme here. <laughs> but <laughs> another question. Are you guys ready? Yeah. So, um, the stabbing sound yep. effects in the 1977 film Halloween were achieved by a ni- knife stabbing which item of food? <laughs> Is it uh, watermelon? Yeah. No. Is it watermelon? Yeah. Yes, that's correct. That is correct. And um, I think that's game over. Should we go back inside? It's me to the post <laughs> once again. Uh, so, okay, well, um, well done, Adam. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, I must admit, I hadn't really thought far enough ahead, to be honest. So, um, uh, well, we found Moira. Have we got. Has this been leading anywhere? We've we just been uh, pulling random objects out of random pieces of furniture. Is it, is it not the fact that she's such a fan of the the genre that she's just di- just put little questions on all to of her possessions? Did this possibly predate her disappearance? Yeah, to, to, to be honest, years? I've made it all up. To be honest, she's, she, oh. this isn't Moira's uh, car. I was just bored. To be honest, lonely, a b- 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 lonely week. This is this is getting a little bit weird. I mean, tremendous effort, but... Johnny, I, I feel for Thanks, you. That was, that was my uh, impression. But, um, but yeah, hey, I, I suppose we've got to give you a, 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 pre- a, a gift. A, a gift? <laughs> a prize? Yeah, do I get a prize for, for, for winning yeah, the thing, or, or do we give uh, Pablo a prize? Because t- oh, actually, yeah, yeah. this is it's, the first time that Pablo's been... A, a guest. A, the, like, the only guest on, the, as a, on a game, though, because it's like we usually have... A, oh, it's a, we have a paper tiger for you. Oh, no, it's, it's made of fabric. Would you like oh, a, a fabric tiger? Oh yeah, it's like like felt felt tiger. Y- yep. I'd have that. I'd have a tiger. The listeners' benefit. Any the tiger is also sat at a little table, sipping tea, and uh, there's a little cake on there as well. Yeah, so yeah. it's a ha- very happy, it's content um, tiger. I mean, you could have this, or you could have Moira's uh, crotchless. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, obviously they're not actually Moira's. So yeah. Wh- um, <laughs> Oh, it looked worn in though, so I mean, who's been wearing uh, those yeah. I, I, I nicked them off a washing line of the caravan next door, there's like an old couple over I'll there. I'll be uh, next door as well. Yeah, yeah, Mothers. Yeah. Mothers Smalls. Oh, yeah. I was about... I was, I was about to ask for the uh, the the Todd that was re- recovered from the uh, the toilet there, but uh, obviously he's not he's not Moira's, so um, I, I don't really have much interest. I'm, uh, any kind of fecal material that I keep, I like it to be firmly in the celebrity yeah. stratus. Right. Got to keep uh, adding to that collection. Mm-hmm. Nice. Well, thanks for taking part in my game, Moira Stewart's Caravan of Death. And I uh, hope you enjoyed playing at home. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on. Okay, so that brings us on to our um, final segment of the podcast, I believe. And um, Pablo, you are, you are still there, I believe. Indeed, I am. Yeah. And uh, oh, I forgot to ask you before, actually, how was your trip up to Glasgow? Was it good? Um, interesting. Um, I got to see an, another side of uh, street life. Oh, mm-hmm. street life! Um, it yeah. was um, quite quite interesting what, uh, what what people do for money or uh, food around that way. But uh, yeah, mm. uh, illuminating would be the word. Illuminating. All right. Okay. Well, uh, look forward to hearing your report <laughs> or your cast, your cover cast. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I won't go so far as to say it was a uh, fan dabby dozy. Mm, nice. Um, well, yeah. Um, obviously, uh, we've been sharing some tales, um, some grisly tales, with it being our Halloween special. Yeah, yeah. So it's right up your alley. Yeah, we've, this, we've, uh, we've, we've had probably. Brookside. My, <laughs> my, pool, my poorly lit um, kind of blind alley. Your dark, dark ginnel, yeah. as we'd say in Yorkshire. So, um, over to you, Pablo. Um, if you're going to spew, spew into this. Yes, thank you. Uh, the Shrine is my film of, uh, well, not to eat food by, although, to be fair, for quite the majority of this film, you'd be all right just having whatever you wanted. Or like a um, pot noodle or... Pot noodle, smorgasbord... Sandwich. Spam mm. sandwich, um, fried egg sandwich, uh, fish finger possible. sandwich. Yeah. I love a fish finger sandwich. Basically, sandwiches or beyond food. Basically, yeah, food. Food. you can eat any food. kind of food. <laughs> um, but it's a 2010 Canadian horror film uh-huh. um, set in Poland. To the majority of it, um, oh, yeah. starts off starts off very well. Um, you've, you've got a bunch of uh, kind of well, a, a terrified man who kind of wakes up attached to something. Um, and okay. you know, before before anything really continues massively, he gets his face smashed in with a massive hammer, oh. um, which is the start off of the film, which is all good. I was thinking, uh, oh, <laughs> buckle in, you know, we'll see what happens here. I'm, I'm partial to a good uh, face hammering, yeah. Um, but yeah, but then it kind of turned into a bit of a, a, a hallmark channel type of relationship work drama where. Um, some lass uh, who was called Carmen in the film mm-hmm. um, was basically a reporter and she wanted to report on this miss- uh, missing colleague who oh, yeah. we find out later is the guy at the start of the film um, so she tries to convince her photographer partner um, played by uh, Aaron Ashmore um, who well, also w- Jimmy Olsen in a small well, I was going to say yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry did I just want to yeah yeah. Well, I was about to say, but yeah, no, it's, I'm, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad his work isn't going unrecognised. I feel like he's been typecasted. He's a uh, photographer, Jimmy Olsen, in Smallville, and well, then he's. Uh, well, from what I understand of the uh, the whole acting process, for most acting CVs, uh, they'll generally have like oh, other interests, uh, horse riding, photography, and they'll generally skew into something that <laughs> oh, I could be Robin Hood if I put down I can fire a bow and arrow. Yeah. Or if you're um, a necrophiliac, yeah. you might land some interesting roles. Or I, I was playing. Well, I, I was playing a little game of uh, pretending that it was like part of a, a wide DC universe story, and this was actually just a, a Jimmy Olsen adventure as he went off to uh, to Poland. Well, that's it. I mean, it's it, um, you know, I think he just basically put photography on his uh, interest list, and it it's kind of stuck him from there. But you know, he's got two jobs out of it. You know, yeah, one was episodic, right. and there's this man knows how to um, the camera. Yeah. yeah, but basically he convinces um, a, a, a partner who's a photographer to come over to Poland to the last place that this fellow was seen or reported from and um, she takes a, an assistant from work um, some lass, forget her name um, but yeah, they, they all go yeah, over to okay. Poland and it it's a little bit um, obviously I, I think that the, there's, there's Polish connections to the making of the film but it does seem quite a, um, a, a backwards portrayal of the Polish people oh, right. um, but mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of like a more more kind of um, throwback rather than negative it's, it's, it's pretty much a medieval village to go to um, with kind of 1920s vests and cloth caps and things like that um, but yeah it, it, it's quite a um, you know repressed area to go to they meet a young girl who seems quite nice but everybody else views them as suspicion they get shouted at by a fellow with a pitchfork and you know they decide the to turn the back well yeah that's it so it's a little bit worrying so they turn the back and walk away um, but then before walking away, they, they go go over to um, this kind of strange smokestack or kind of fog cloud in the distance. Oh, okay. Um, and you know, everybody bar this fella photographer goes into the cloud, um, and within there, there's there's some sort of kind of like demonic stone sculpture clutching the, like a heart. Um, yeah, which is some sort of shrine. To the devil, a, shri- a shrine, an actual shrine in the film called The Shrine. What a clever idea. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, so they, they did that and um, 
you know, to find a bunch of bodies in caskets with masks on the faces, which have been, you know, hammered on again with the uh, the head hammering. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and then then they basically kind of get captured by the the druid type people, um, and it kind of goes off from there. So it's um, you know, there is a very interesting twist to the film, um, which I, I don't know if you want me to say what it is. Um, um I don't know. It, uh... I don't know. Yeah, do it. Okay, Spo- yeah, okay right, officially spoiler alert. If you want to watch The Shrine, go away now. Uh, <laughs> probably on Netflix. I'm not sure. Uh, download it and then come back uh, to this point in the pop- podcast. So, uh, Pablo, yeah, and welcome back. If you yeah, welcome if back. You back. <laughs> hey, hope you enjoyed yeah, The Shrine. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've, I've, I'm just to say, I mean, I would say that um, for the majority of this film, it is quite dull, so you probably want to skip to this point anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but it turns out that um, seeing the shrine turns you into a kind of um, a, a potential vessel for some sort of demonic presence. Okay. So all these villagers who've been killing people, um, it turns out they're actually doing a service for, for the world because they're trying to stop the devil from getting out. Oh, and the only way they seem to know how to do it is yes. to hammer these masks you've got to you've got to kill its eyes you've got to get it through the eyes or something so it's a the mask inside that mask it's kind of like a mini iron maiden uh yeah. where it's got two spikes where the eyes are and then whoosh, sledgehammer boom so you you know you get to see um the assistant last getting her head smashed in mm-hmm. um but then they escape and then carmen turns into essentially um a, well a version of linda blair and the exorcist uh, right. but all 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 grown up all growed up yeah. um but yeah yeah so the, 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 and there's a bit of butchery there there's uh, a fella gets his, his throat literally ripped out Oof. um in quite a, a um quite throat ripping. yeah it was nice it was nice interesting uh, pl- practical effects no cgi um it's all uh some sort of um uh, latex work but uh yeah no um, superb in that degree and there's a couple of other things like that and obviously somebody you know um not to give too much away, as I already have. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's you know there's a there's a couple more face hammerings that happen um, before the end of the film. Uh, but yeah, so, I mean, so, face hammering. Well, that's it. It's hammer time, you know, round it's set. <laughs> MC face hammer mask or mask face hammer, however you would do that. I suppose face then mask and hammer face mask hammer. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'll stick with that one. Yeah, cool. So on a I suppose on a rating. Um, a gore rating how does it rate this one um well as i say it's a film of two halves in the fact that it kind of teases you in initially with um a, a face mask hammer um and then nothing for a good 45 minutes or thereabouts mm. um but as i say it picks it up in the end so i suppose if you snipped out the middle you know you save yourself a bit of time <laughs> um but as a whole i would have to probably give it Two, uh, two face mask hammers out of five. Okay, no, no, that sounds about appropriate from your summary, I'd say. But um, um, mm. worth a watch on a Halloween night, or uh, what do you? Uh, potentially, know? yeah. I mean, there is a kind of a creepy undertone with it, and as I say, it's it's you know got mm. your kind of mysterious foreign elements of people in robes <laughs> and. You know, you're Americans abroad or Canadians abroad in this instance. I must admit, I do love films like this where uh, <laughs> some, you sometimes think they've been purposely designed to make people too afraid to go on holiday to places. It's like, yeah, <laughs> fuck that, man. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to Poland. Not, yeah, not that Polish going tourist office. Is, <laughs> yeah. uh, to be fair, I watched Midnight Express and uh, that put me off going to uh, to Turkey for a while, <laughs> at least smuggling yeah. drugs into Turkey yeah. uh, up my ass. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I mean, I did tell you to stop that anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually don't think this sticks him up his ass. He's or straps them onto him, don't they? But, um, well, but anyway, but yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you yeah. know, precisely why you didn't need to go to that measure. I know, when I know. You gave it a go. I mean, I know, I know. Anyway, anyway, let's yes, Pablo, not, carry not on. Dwell on that. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm intrigued by this, uh, this mewling service that you uh, provide. <laughs> no, it's just I guess it's a bit of a side business. Once. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. He doesn't talk about it very much. No, no. The, 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 the trick is that don't, you know, clench too much. Otherwise. And you never get it back. <laughs> you never get it back then. Did you well, I mean, I've, 
Lost. I, I I have to get a lot of my kind of um, deregulated, dangerous Russian um, pharmaceuticals in from Russia that way. Because uh, mm. you know you can buy whatever you want over there, um, stock up, you know, fill your boots. But it's getting it back that's the problem. So yeah. you know. So what, what kind I've, of uh, what kind of implements or instruments of of pain have you managed to smuggle inside yourself, Protel? Well, it's it's not. It's it's more kind of like a, a mixture of um, you know. Pharmacological um, grade A psychotropics and oh, kind of, you know, uh, sodium pentothal type of thing. Stuff you um, can't get on the NHS, basically. Oh, well, stuff, I'm with you. You know, it, it's kind of things that I use to either coerce or control um, my subjects when I'm feeling. Mm. But, well, sometimes I put on a lab coat and I pretend what I do is for like an experiment or some sort of further research. Mm. Um, but I, I don't keep the notes, to be honest. It just makes me feel better. Well, where are you, by the way? Just um, that tree behind you looks really familiar. Hang on a second. Well, I mean, just I'm. I mean, any tree looks the same. To be, to be honest, Joey, yeah. I, I would admire uh, any kind of recognition of trees. I mean, that's. Uh, do you think that's, that um, Adam? Do you think that tree outside? Well, that looks really uncannily like where Pablo is. Where, where Pablo, are you? Are you? Are you, watch, are are you, you in the woods? Are you in Hornsey? You in Hornsey, Hornsey? Uh, well, well, there's different Hornseys uh, about, isn't there? Is it Hornsey, Hornsley, the East Coast, Hon- East Yorkshire East Coast, mm. Hornsey. The trees oh, are literally yeah. moving in the background, and what, as we're skyping and very. Oh, yeah. The wind <laughs> is blowing. Weird. There's an Weird. owl. There's an owl. Oh, that's the same bloody owl. No, it's, no way. Look at that. It's got the same pattern and everything. Well, hey, that's that quite a coincidence. Well, it's a coincidental, isn't it? I mean, um, yeah. I, I try to keep moving constantly, so I, I don't know exact, my exact location. I mm. mean, locations differ on a day to day basis with me, so, you John, know, I, lock, I, the I could be, lock the door. Lock the door. I'm not there. having a thirst hammer in. I could be there. I could be right outside right now. I could have actually crawled across from the tree whilst you've been staring at the tree and got really close to the window uh, to a point where oh I can God. see you both and, oh and you can't God, see me. Um, I could have done that. I'm not saying I've necessarily done that, but... Why do we get a static caravan? We can't fucking drive this away, can we? <laughs> oh, dear. I think I might know what happened to Moira now. Well, there's things you can do to a static caravan um, where you can tow it away. Um as long as you've got the right level of um, kind of in- industrial machinery. I don't know if you've ever seen the um, kind of uh, heavy machinery uh, movers, generally on Channel 5 or um, what used to be Men and Motors, where they've got the massive uh, gigantic thing, where essentially I can move what I need to move whenever I need to move it. So uh, uh, Stalling for time. He's, got, he's made his way off to the other side of the caravan. Oh, my God. Um, shit, what do we do? What do we do? D- d- uh, <laughs> lock the d- get the air well where the... Uh, I heard. Um, oh, uh, Pablo. I heard the dog we, we, we might need to go. We've got a Pablo outside. Um, uh, hang on, what the fuck? What, I'm, I'm, no, you, you're Pablo. Pablo, uh, don't uh, hammer my face, please. I'll see you very soon. Uh, yeah. Whoa, whoa, wait, Pablo, Pablo. <laughs> He's gone. Oh shit! Fuck, dude. I told you. I told you to find us eventually. Oh, I can. I can. I can hear movement. Is that oh. a chainsaw? I'm gonna go for. I a can gun. hear a chainsaw, dude. That's either a moped going past or a chainsaw. Uh, oh well. I'm, I'm, I don't know if he drives a moped. Yeah. I, I'm gonna go for a dump anyway. There's no time right. to. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oof. God. Oh. Bloody oh, hell. Jesus. Oh, Christ. Oh, that's her arm gone. Maureen is not. Oh, like uh, she's not going to walk that off, mate. Leg's uh, gone. Oh, Leg no. is gone. Sorry, Lester. Um, she ain't going to dance no more. But basically, it looks like Pablo got got the wrong caravan. Didn't get us. He's, it looks like he seems to have picked out the uh, the old couple next door to us. Some renders. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's a couple uh, of couple of, you know, a lovely old couple of ornithologists. Yeah. Going to come out to do a bit of bird watching. And now, no, no uh, Ed's off. That's it. It's quite impressive to watch, probably. Look how methodical he is. It's clinical, isn't he? He's even cleaning up after himself as he's doing. Yeah, I tell you what, though. I'm questioning those leather pants. Mm. I don't know if he's a good choice. It's no, he definitely. He could, he could make himself a little more. Um, I can hear him squeaking around for me. It's just the fact that they're, uh, his, his ass is exposed that I don't, yeah. think's, I don't think that's necessary. And what's with the makeup? I don't know. I don't know. I've never s- we've, we've never seen him made up like this before. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I was, I was doing a little dance now. What's he doing? Oh, what's with the feather boa? I don't know. Oh dear me! I, don't, I was I was tucking his pe- 
Oh, she's, oh this is just like Buffalo oh, Bill oh, shit. Oh, right. oh, of course, yeah. And, and yeah, he's yeah, in, yeah, he's into that. We'll, we'll, do you want some, do you want some apple crumble? I've got some left over in the fridge. Uh, yeah, alright. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Shall we eat that? What, put a bit of Strictly on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not a fan, but I, 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 feel, I feel like I could watch something like that yeah. right now. Mm. A bit, bit, bit take your slash mind off it out, now. to be honest. Take your mind off it, you know. Yeah. Moira's not gonna, you know, she's she's never gonna dance again. We may as well, well watch some people who uh, who can have yeah. a bit of apple crumble, yeah. right? Okay. Enjoy well, the rest of his holiday. Yeah. Well, we hope you've enjoyed our Halloween special, folks. And uh, if we make it out live of this caravan, that is, if you'd like to get in touch with us, then do tweet us at FTWFB Podcast. Get in touch with us on Facebook or email us at um, I don't know dot com because I can't remember what it is. Yeah, but you know, I'm sure you'll be able to find us. World of the internet. Mm. Um, so uh, thanks for joining us on All Hallows Eve, and um, yeah, stay safe out there. Yes. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Food to Watch Films by, brought to you by Johnny, Adam, and Pablo. If you like what you hear, then don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes, share an episode with a friend or a family member, and basically just um, continue to enjoy our podcast and love us. Otherwise, we will find you and we will kill you. Thanks for listening. Bye.